Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you the best setting for Stellar Blade on PC. We're going to start by optimizing Windows. And after that, we're going to take a look on your NVIDIA parameter and Radian. And after that, we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again, capture, capture, make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power uh back then uh, we were recommending to use the best performance but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that Another thing uh, I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now the NVIDIA setting. So first of all, we're going to go to the graphics section in the program setting. Select Stator Blade. What I normally recommend in any game, just go to your DLSS override and make sure that you're using the latest one, as you can see. So apply it. You're going to make sure that you always use the latest version of DLSS. So each time NVIDIA will do an update, you have the latest one. So you don't need to wait on the developer to update their game with the new version of the DLSS. So that's a cool feature that you can do over there. In the global setting, I don't do a lot of stuff. So low latency, I recommend to go with on. I block my FPS at 237 FPS because I'm using G-Sync. My monitor is 240 Hz. So I always do minus 3 to make sure that I always stay in my G-Sync range. And for the, the shader cache size, also, if you have a lot of space on your hard drive, definitely go with 100. If you're not, just go with uh, 10. I think by default, the uh, NVIDIA is 5. So when you have a lot of game installed, sometimes it can be an issue and you will start to have stuttering because your shader cache size will be full. So that's a good thing that you can do over here. After that, we're going to go to set settings in the system. So in the display section, uh, if you want to activate your G-Sync, this is pretty much where you're going to do it. In my case, I go on and I apply it on full screen and window mode. And I also select the proper screen, as you can see. After that, I recommend to look at your display properties. I know a lot of people who's buying an, a screen and they think they're using the eye refresh rate, but by default, the screen is at 60. <laughs> so really important, make sure that you're playing native. So if you have a 1440p monitor, as you can see over there, native resolution and 240 Hertz, make sure that you're seeing 240 Hertz over here. So really important to look at this. And the last parameter that I can recommend, it's the um, uh, in the color option. If you have a, an HDR monitor and it's compatible with 10-bit color, make sure that you're using 10 over there. Same thing with your output dynamic range. So make sure that everything is properly set up depending on your monitor. And uh, you can also adjust your color over there. I always like to add 5% more in my digital vibrance. It's less gray. The color are popping more, much more. So, But again, it's a question of preference. One more thing that I recommend, I like to put my power maximum at the maximum. It's it's 133%. Uh, 
you will have better boost clock. Your boost clock will be longer. It's a little bit better with the NVIDIA algorithm, but you're going to make sure that you have, first of all, a good power supply. You don't have thermal issue and stuff like that. And it will work uh, normally fine. You're going to get like 5 to 7% boost without overclocking anything. So this is pretty much it. Now let's go to the Radian parameter. So now for Radian card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluent motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one, this one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. All right, quick pause. Uh, this part of the video is an ad for Instant Gaming. If you like discovering what's up right now, check out the trending section on their website. It's full of game that everyone is playing at the moment, and most of them are way cheaper than other platforms. You will find games for PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and even the Switch. Everything comes from an official reseller, so no weird marketplace issue. They got a 24-7 customer support, a strong trust pilot score, and the site is super easy to browse. The link's in the description, go take a look, and let's get back into the video. So now inside of the game, so first of all in display mode, make sure that you're playing full screen to have the best of your FPS and less input lag. Make sure that you're playing a native. I don't use VSync, and anyway, if you're using frame generation, this one will be locked. 
Uh, target frame rate, I just go with 240. Uh, anyway, I'm just locking my FPS at 237 with the NVIDIA app because I want to stay in my G-Sync uh, range. So uh, for an example, my monitor is a 240 Hertz monitor. If I'm doing more than 240 FPS, I'm going to lose that G-Sync. So that's why I do always do my amount of Hertz on my monitor minus 3 FPS. And I lock my FPS like that. We're going to go a little bit lower like this. Motion blur, I remove it. The question of visibility, I don't like this effect. Same thing with camera shake, I don't like that. Uh, film grain off and chromatic aberration off. Now let's go with the graphic setting. You have two different upscale techniques, the LSS4 and FSR3. So first of all, the LSS4 for sure, if you have a 4000 series or 5000 series, go for that one. This is the best upscaling technique. Um, you have a couple of options that you can select here. At quality normally, you're going to get 10% boost in your FPS. Balance, 15 to 18%. Performance, you're like 22%. High performance, you can get 25 to 28. And the LAA, you're going to lose 10% in your FPS. So my recommendation is start with quality. But if you're struggling with your FPS, go with balance. Because honestly, the balance mode with the LSS4 is almost on par and even a little bit better than quality from the LSS3. So that's a really good preset that you can use. After that, for the sharpness, uh, it's a question of preference over here. Normally, you should be between 4 and 6. If you feel that your game is too blurry, go higher. If it looks too much like an Instagram filter, go lower. Frame generation, if you have a 4000 series, definitely activate it. You can get two, uh, multiply by 2 for your FPS. And you can get also triple or quadruple if you're using a 5000 series. The input lag is not that bad, uh, but uh, if you you like the amount of the FPS that you have without it, honestly, you should not using it. Uh, but uh, again, it's a question of preference. It's, if, for an example, if you're struggling with your FPS, definitely uh, activate that one. Uh, Reflex, I recommend to activate it for sure. And after that... If you have a Radiant card, you have FSR3, but also it can be interesting if you have a 3000 series or 2000 series from NVIDIA uh, because you have the frame generation from FSR. So let's go to those settings. So first of all, with FSR3, honestly, I recommend to go with quality. Balance is not that great. It's a bit blurry, so definitely go with that one. Adjust your sharpness. And you have the frame generation over there from FSR. So it can be nice. So for an example, you have a 3060, 2060, 2070. You're struggling to, to have your uh, a good amount of FPS. So definitely test FSR with frame gen. It can help with your performance. So now let's go back to DLSS like this. So now the settings, environmental object detail, I recommend to go with medium. You're going to get a nice 3% boost over there and not a huge impact between medium and eye on your image quality. Character object detail, you can definitely run this one at eye. After that, for environment texture and character texture, it really depends on the amount of VRAM. And that's pretty cool. The game, uh, normally I always say, make sure that you have 10% empty, but the game is showing you your us and other uh, application what they're currently using. So uh, as you can see, I have a lot of space. So that's why I went to very high. You can even go to 4K if you want for your texture. Clutter density, I recommend to go with medium. You're going to get a nice 3% boost. Environmental object visible distance and character visible distance. Those one can tank your FPS like crazy. So my recommendation is start with 40 and 50. If your game is running smoothly, just add 10 to your slider each time and do some tests. Uh, I mean, I can play a lot higher than that, but my recommendation is start with this. It's not that bad for your visual and you're going to get a nice amount of your FPS. After that, uh, lightning and shadow. This one, uh, shadow quality, uh, you have a lot of different options and this one have a huge impact. It's like 2-4% to for each bracket. At low and very low, honestly, the game looks a little bit flat. I'm not a huge fan. If you're playing on a low-end PC, start with low. If not, just start with medium and look at your FPS. Lighting quality, go with medium. Nice balance between the image quality and the amount of FPS that you will gain. It's like 3% boost. Volumetric fog also, a nice 6% boost. And at low, the game looks very flat, so I don't recommend to use low. Go with medium. Particle quality, this one can take your FPS if you're struggling with your CPU. So for sure, if you have a low-end PC, just go with low. And it's not something that you will necessarily see too much when you're playing the game. If not, just go with medium with that one. And animation quality, go with medium also.
After that, you have a couple of post-processing uh, settings. And beyond inclusion, this one can give you a lot of FPS. It's like 4% for each bracket, but at low, the games is very flat again. So my recommendation, go with medium. Uh, and uh, depth of field, I'm not a huge fan of it. You know, when you focus on uh, some place, everything uh, near it, uh, outside of your focus will be blurry. It's not very good for visibility, honestly. I'm, I don't like that. So just go off, chromatic aberration off, like I said. And the last one will be your screen space reflection quality. Uh, this one normally should be fine with medium. And uh, if you're struggling with a low end PC, just deactivate it. It will help you a lot. I, I did a test on, a, on an old GPU, an RX 580, and it was uh, a, a good thing to do, honestly. So if your 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 GPU is very old, definitely test this one. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my guide for Stellar Blade. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.